appearing in his room. The guy that was taking him out on outings that Mama thought was like a big brother actually was telling her son that he was a vampire. Uh, so then the kid started really getting off the wall behavior and was actually cussing her out. And, and, and the one evening I went over there, and uh, they're Christians. They're Christians. And so when I'm interviewing the family, he told me everything that he'd been involved in. And then Mama said, when I was a little girl, I used to pray for Ouija boards. She said, do you think that could? I said, absolutely. My, my grandmama, come on. I'm, said, they used to practice playing with Ouija boards and think that stuff's interesting. You know, that's fun. There's no harm in that. There is harm. You're opening up yourself to spirit, demonic spirits through tarot card reading, what, uh, tea leaf reading, Palm reading, um, horoscopes. Mm -hmm. We got the, 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 the things people think that are very harmless. harmless. Tell, tell them that you got a friend right now that's mad at you because, well, we're not going to do it because they may be watching. But <laughs> if you're still messing with the horoscopes, that's bad. That's evil. <laughs> and you're, no, seriously, you're opening up the door. There's Christians, come on, there's Christians that, that every time they get the newspaper, they run to the horoscope to see. What the what the word is for the day? The word for the day is right here. Amen. 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 The living word, not some dead word. And if you, honest to God, but but so the way demonic spirits can get into and the most simplest thing, pornography, is a bad thing. There's a lot Christian men, maybe women too. They're they're addicted to. There's ministries seriously, and God bless them. That, that are dealing with men and issues over pornography because they don't feel like they can go to the church or the pastor because then the whole church knows about it. So, so these and, I, and, and bless them, we know a guy that does the, a ministry to about pornography and stuff. Mm -hmm. But they have these repeated sins. And let's face it, we talked about this the other week. If the person likes their demon, then they're probably not going to give their demon up. If they like their sin, if they like their pornography, I could get into cigarette smoking, alcohol, all, all this stuff that, 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 that most people, uh, society, society says it's okay that you that you drink and you smoke and you do, you know, so that's become acceptable, yet people are possessed by or oppressed by uh, things that we wouldn't say. The, 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 uh, I, I'll put this in your notes only to say that uh, you can get over there and talk about um, relationships, and I like the way the guy laid this out. Uh, resentment, bitterness, anger, hate, and it talks about trauma, uh, it talks about uh, emotional spirits, addictions, drugs, anger. Um, a lot of times we may find out in dealing with a person that we're dealing with a generational curse that's been handed down from generation to generation. For instance, have you ever heard that I just got my Irish temper, but I got that from him. my great granddaddy was Irish. But they use it as an excuse and they even joke about it when you know what? A lot of that is not a joke. That's serious. Because at some point, and we know, psychologists know, I deal with this all the time when we work with Irish, that, we, that we, we can role model what we have role modeled to us. You know, if we grew up in a, in a judgmental family where we have a judgmental father or a critical voice, and maybe when you track it back, you find out that his daddy had the same, and it's kind of like passed down, a, 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 you know, a, a very abusive, maybe not physically, but verbally, uh, or whatever, or maybe maybe even verbally and physically. We, I know, working with young men in correctional uh, work, the juvenile department, uh, Juvenile delinquents. So a lot of the young men have had role models to them about uh, spousal abuse. They grew up with it. They saw their dad get what he wanted by beating up the, the and it, it opens the door for the stuff to, to enter in uh, to people. Um, depression. Uh, this, this, one of the things from a psych, psychological point, just doing the work I do, we do a, um, a psychosocial uh, assessment. So we look at family lines, uh, sicknesses, mental illness, and we usually can track it back to either one or both sides of a marital situation to where you can go back generations and find out where there was depression, anxiety, 
you know, Uncle Joe was in the mental hospital, and you can track schizophrenia and all these these common um, major mental health issues, bipolar disorder, attention deficit disorder, and all this stuff. You can trace it back through generation. But here's the important thing: it's in the name of in the name of Jesus and by the power of His blood. We have authority to cast out demons, to grab, to get a hold of the root cause of, of, of demonic forces in a person's life. But sometimes it takes us sitting down and actually going over um, checklist. <laughs> and, and, and if you guys, I, I don't know how many would be interested, but there's a, um, and it looks like I'm not going to get finished today, but there, there's, a, there's, there's a, actually an assessment in here. And if anybody would like to have the whole copy, it, it, it goes in how, how you go down through categories. If you're going to sit down and counsel with a person and you get them to fill this out. And you know, the materials are from Francis McNutt's this is, well, Jackson. this is Francis McNutt, but this right here is from Randy Clark's Oh, that's Randy Clark. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But let, let me just say, if, if, if you want a copy of that, it's very interesting because if you're counseling with people, and they're serious about getting rid of their demons, this will take you step by step by step what questions to ask so that you get at the root cause. Once you get the root cause, you can pray more effectively and, and cast the root out uh, of that. I, I do want to mention this book. This is called uh, Deliverance from Evil Spirits, A Practical Guide by Francis McNutt. And, and I, I would think that everybody that's, that's got any kind of ministry should buy this book. You can get them used on Amazon.com. Christian Healing Ministry. The Christian Healing Ministry. If you hadn't read this, he, he goes step by step by step um, through deliverance ministry, different types of demons, um, you know, how, how to speak to different types of demons and, 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 and the different uh, types of, of deliverance ministry. But it's very interesting. And I'm, I don't want to get ready to close with this. Because today, here I'll pass this around. You can. Um, what what you what you need to know is that we would think, okay, when you look at the first century church, we 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 read it and we see it that they were, they dealt with a lot of demonic forces. They on the positive side they saw angels and and all that stuff. Well, do you think? That, that went away over the periods of years. It has not went away. Uh, <laughs> angels are just as real now as they were then, probably more so. <laughs> we just need to open up our eyes and see them. Uh, but demonic forces have not went away. They're here. They're real. They, they've infiltrated every area of society. It's a real deal. you know. But yet, uh, seminary schools uh, the, 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 are, are politically correct universities and it seems like the more intelligent people get the stupider they get they have discounted the, the thing about it are demons real even in even in schools of theology um, they, 